my name's Andrew John Teague. Um, I'm the uh, founder of Dads uh, and co-founder of NAP, Dads, Dads Against Double Standards, who work with mums, fathers, uh, grandparents, and so on, um, helping and supporting um, people out there going through the family courts um, and working for change for children. Uh, NAP is the National Association of Alienated Parents, is where some of us parents have got together to form the group NAP um, to challenge things that are wrong with the system that we're hoping to put, um, you know, with help and guidance and probably uh, other things to help the system um, to rebuild itself from the bottom to the top, I guess. This video is about... Um, the effects that family courts have on what we call the targeted parents. They're the parents that, majority of the time, uh, make the application to court for um, contact with their children. Targeted, because that's exactly what they are. From the beginning, uh, where um, ex-partners may be uh, bringing through the false allegations, the fabrications and everything else, um, to deny the contact or control the contact uh, with, it, with the targeted parent. Many of you have probably watched the I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out Review program. Um, and you can see some of the celebrities over time that they've been away from their children for maybe a week or two weeks, had no contact or anything else, uh, and the effect it has on them uh, whilst out there in the wild and there's no communication with um, their children whatsoever or well, think of that tenfold or a hundredfold because that is what it is like uh, through the family court process when a targeted parent is made to jump hoops um, goalposts to move to jump more hoops assessments you name it um, on nothing short of um, the way that the system latch on to the resident parent because that's where the children uh, are, are residing the unhealthy attachment the aligned parent um, protocol and the probability that these people it's they probably done it they probably did do it because the exes say so question we have to ask ourselves is how much can a normal average human being take from being denied contact with their children? How much can they take going back on normally what would be an eight weeks adjournment while something else is done or another eight weeks adjournment and continuously going on from not months but sometimes years, maybe two to three years before anything is gets to some point where the contact may be put in place and a lot of the time this is due to um, the likes of Kashkaf who when that child had been um, denigrated when that child had been um, indoctrinated and the words that many people may not have heard the triangulation that goes on behind family courts uh, the deflection that goes on behind family courts and where the children then turn around and make the statement such as, I don't want to see my other parent again. Whereas before family courts, they had a normal, happy relationship with that parent. Kaskaf's answer to that is, well, they don't want to see you anymore. There's nothing we can do. So there's no asking why or finding out the reasons why these children have suddenly turned around during court process that they don't want to see their children. For two years now, just about, um, for longer than two years, I fought them through, through the family courts myself. Um, this is not the first time I've been through this. But I can certainly tell you that over almost two years now, we've been battling to um, help people keep up on top. Um, get them from the, uh, what I call the backside on the floor syndrome. Where these parents are left by the family courts, thrown out of their... Uh, with nothing, uh, bewildered, um, lonely, um, depressed, riddled with anxiety and trauma and just simply thrown out the family courts 
on seesaw maybe so mites that's how far it actually gets this is statements that we have actually heard uh maybes or mites and the parent might not bring the child back or the this that the other this is actually what is going on with these agencies they have turned now with the bit of power that they were given with the probability so there is no innocence there is no you can't prove yourself innocent with anything that doesn't work uh, because the label still follows you with the probability so parents are pretty much uh, healthy parents are kept away from their children on the say so the say so that's what they kept as court cases prolong then parents are kept away more because of what the, the way that the system abuse and bully them parents a normal parent that is turned into something that they are not not criminals yet in family court that's what they portray as as false allegations and harassment orders are dished out like smarties non-molestation orders dished out like smarties anything to get the control of the child's coercive control which actually is against the law but it's not executed as far as family courts are concerned like a lot of other things are not executed as far as family courts uh, if an ex-partner is found to be lying then it's just well, you lied we can see it okay move on uh, but all the effects of this on the children are something that should not be moved on from you know I get, i've had it myself you know your contacts going better now you should move on so we just ignore the damage that's happened to the children already that's imprinted on the child the damage that's imprinted on all these children that go through this that really need support before they become teenagers before they become adults before they fail in their life many people out there are feeling like there is no end to this when they go through family courts you'd expect that when they go into family courts to get contact with the children that's exactly what would happen they'd go into court and get contact with the children far from it absolutely way off track there that's not what happens they go into family court they file for a contact order in family courts then all of a sudden there's um, barrages of allegations or fabrications or anything else that even the courts don't recognize the difference between an allegation and a fabrication which leaves these parents um, wondering well why are they having contact why you, I'm going to court for justice to have contact with my child why am I not having it why is all this being thrown at me that's not the worst of it it gets worse because then you get the agencies involved that certainly like leeches latch on to the one parent and what they say and everything else and this is a um, a massive growing problem through the family courts more so now that um, there are more mothers that's going through this um, more and more as who controls the children who snatches the children and gets the control get the upper hand this is what's happening behind family court doors not any of them taking one eye hotter of the child's feelings child's wishes the child's best interest it's not in any child's best interest to be stuck in the mat bat in the middle of i wouldn't call a war zone i would call it an unhealthy parent continuously targeting a healthy parent that parent that wants to be in that child's life um, and fighting hammer and tongue to do that a parent fighting to be a parent having to fight to be a parent against all odds you can imagine that if you're a parent out there and you're with your child and you have different people trying to stop you from seeing your stopping you not trying to stopping you from seeing your parent and telling you if you don't do this then you're not seeing your child if you don't do that then you're not seeing your child we are fully aware that there are some parents that may need help and may need support may have anger issues but some of the things that happen in family court are based on with the way that they are treated through family court you can imagine 
going to court now, the judges may be thanking someone for, okay, well, yes, I'm going to court, accept, and I'll do this, I want to thank you for taking the time, and, you know, this, that, and the other, and then more hoops and more jumping, and you're still going to get to see your child as naturally as you should. Well, it may be stopped, the contact may be just abruptly stopped by the ex-partner, and then you have to wait months before you can get it back into place again. All this, it's damaging the child, but it's also damaging the parent, the healthy parent, that's going to court. I can't do this anymore. Uh, some of the words that I use, very regular, very, very regular. I can't do this anymore. I can't see my kids going through this. I can't do this anymore. I can't cope. Um, I just want my life to end. These are phrases that I use regular, on a regular basis. More regular than you can care to imagine. These are phrases, well, other phrases that I use. Please, can you help me? Because obviously the family courts are not. The court of the family courts, I suppose what you could say is the brains of the family court are the judges. They're the ones inevitably that have to make the decisions. It's a hard decision to make to stop a child from um, being around the parent. It's the hardest decision, second only to the death penalty, to have to take the, make that decision. And as we already know, the death penalty is the worst thing that anyone could ever... A judge could ever face down on someone. So now, the worst thing in this country is for the judge to make that decision. And are these judges making them decisions on the right merit? Are they making them on the um, right say-sos? For example, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. That's where something may happen um, with... Well, many relate this to the army, armed forces... Um, others may already know that this could be related to a, this, a car accident or uh, someone going through something traumatic such as rape or anything else. These are the things that they go through. Family courts is like that. That is what it's like in family courts. It causes PTSD, coercive PTSD. Because this parent would not be going through PTSD had they not be go through it. Being, had they not be going through Exactly what they're going through, through family courts. Bullying tactics. Terrorism. They're actually fearful of doing anything. And every single one of these things is used against them. The child is at the bottom. That is what they use, your children. Now look, if you don't do this, you're not getting to see your children. If you don't do that, you're not getting to see your children. Do you think it doesn't happen? So many of you out there that are not in this, do you actually think this doesn't happen? Let me assure you. I'll tell you something of my own case. Kafkas. The statement they used. It is not in the best interest of my child, our child, to be out there fighting for these other children, fighting for other children. That is the words that they used. It's not in your your child's best interest to be out there fighting for other people, other children. Not other people, fighting for other children. Because they know that's what I'm there for. Children, children, children. Children first every time. So what they're saying is, what they were trying to say was, you've got a choice. You either stop what you're doing and concentrate on your child and you forget about every other single child out, out there or else. That's what they were saying. I'm still here. I'm still having contact with my child. The other agencies involved. Written down in black and white. If Andrew does not stop, then we will stop his contact. If Andrew does not stop, we will stop his contact. If I don't stop doing this, do you know it's the same agency that actually, uh, going back... Right at the beginning of this, turn around and say, oh, you like to talk, you like to do this, you go out and do it, you go and do your campaign. That's the same agency. Of course, they thought it was just going to lead to nowhere. But imagine parents out there that have to go through this every time they go to court. 
wondering when they're going to see their children again. The children in the background wondering when they're ever going to see their parent again. That's where heartbreak is. Children are left vulnerable. Children that have um, their parent having a new partner, probably not even being cleared, having more rights around that children than the biological parent. <laughs> we can get cars to drive themselves. We can get cars to park themselves. We can get motorbikes now to hover. We can do all these things with so much technology at our hands. Yet we can't get family courts to sort themselves out because of the ignorance, because of the, of the uneducated ignorance of these people in the family courts. And I, on, on yes, I am talking judges, CAPCAS, social services, psychologists is called in. None of them are educated in what is actually happening with these children out there. None of them are qualified. Yet they will make the statements such as, we think you are a risk of future harm to your children. Yet that child is broken, heartbroken that they're not getting to see that parent that they had a life with before family courts. Something else. Many of you out there in your relationships and with your children go on your everyday life. Some of you may argue. Some of you may argue in front of the kids. Some of you may... Um, a lot of things that nobody really bothers about. Things that normal everyday life suddenly become big, huge, massive problems in family court. It's unbelievable. And, and believe me, this is exactly what is happening. And it took two, over two years, two and a half years to, of hard fighting. I don't know how many times I was back in court, they'd, call, they'd throw a court course year in because uh, I do videos on you or whatever else. It's, it's the fact, bottom line is, um, the truth is seems to be the taboo subject in family courts. They'd rather just continuously target the healthy parent who is down, out, vulnerable. Their ass is on the floor syndrome and it's so damned easy to keep attacking them. And there's a lot of reasons why. I would imagine that uh, my opinion there is cash calf and social services. Uh, we are fully aware. The resident parent, 95% um, of the time, will get legal aid. They will get the legal aid. Uh, so they have a lawyer. They may even have a barrister appointed. So it's a damned sight easier to keep targeting that targeted parent than go up against um, a ex's lawyers, ex's barristers. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of reasons why it's so much easier to hope and pray that that parent gives in and goes away. To make their life easier. Got to remember as well. It's a multi-billion pound industry. Here in the UK. They make a. There is a fortune. That goes through family courts. And everybody's. Uh, like the little birds pecking at the seeds. Getting their bit of it. Except. The. Um, alienated parent. Except the parent. The targeted parent. Except them. They're the ones that have to struggle. They're the ones that have to pay. <laughs> the ex-partner breaks the court order. They have to pay to take it back to court. One to two percent of them court orders are enforced. One, if a hundred thousand court orders went through in five years. It's nothing. Absolutely nothing. They're not worth the paper that they're written on. They're not worth... The time that you pay judges, because if you, you pay them, they're not worth the time that the judges actually type out and print these orders. It's, they're not worth the time. All the lower courts don't recognize any of this. Ignorant. How many more deaths have to happen 
behind family court, through family court doors, before people wake up and say, hang on a minute, this has to stop. And I don't mean just by parents that go through this. I'm talking about vulnerable children where they are misplaced. There's a lot more needs to be done. There are a lot of changes need to happen. Identifying the, the problems is the simple part. Getting these pe people to sit around the table and have a powwow kind of thing is the hard part. That's where they'll all argue amongst each other and who's going to do the best thing for this and who's not. Uh, but the point, the fact is, a lot of this is to do with the bias between resident and non-resident parents. And also it has a lot to do with, um, I guess, in some aspects, some of the feminism that goes on, uh, which scream out for their equality and everything else. And that's where people have to worry, because there are so many men that go through it, um, and so many women support it. For example, Women's Aid has been going for quite some time. Um, the history of women, Women's Aid, way back when, um, is a different story. But I will tell you one thing. If there's anybody that went on the Women's Aid page and seen the way that um, some people are treated out there, that's not equality, that's just shocking. If you want to know how to stop your parent, the other parent, from having contact with their child, then you only have to go on to these kinds of pages. Nets, Mums, Women's Aid, they'll all tell you. They'll all give you the ideas of what to do. One of the very ones that the courts actually send them to, to help. Hey, I'm all for any woman that is getting beaten up, having the support that they want. What I'm not on for is women that hide behind this and abuse the abuse that's happening to children. That in itself is absolutely disgusting. A woman that has been beaten up, tortured, or whatever else, and then you get these others that use that just to gain control of a child, gain control of the word residency, get that word settled. You have to ask yourself, in this day and age, what are the agencies doing? Nothing. Anyway, thank you.